Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be explaining the difference between scripts, extensions, plugins, and the newest UXP plugins for Adobe programs. Now I've made a video like this in the past, but the audio wasn't that great and uh, my explanation wasn't as informed as it is now. So I'm going to be updating this video on the four types of sort of extension or add-on types of tools you can create for Adobe programs. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out our GitHub page, follow us there for coding updates, check out the Instagram page as well for live updates, and now the AE Scripts link down below where I'm starting to upload products which you can purchase to help support or just use to improve your workflow. So be sure to check those links out below. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with a lot of our knowledgeable members and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link for that is in the description. And while I'm here as well, make sure you check out the AE Scripts uh, page linked in the description for my NT Productions page. Currently, I have just false color available, which is on sale as the recording of this video and as it will be posted. So make sure you go check that out and uh, check out future stuff coming out. All right, so let's start with script. Scripts are the most basic form of add-ons you can create for Adobe programs. These are usually created to automate or basically speed up workflow or things that you find yourself doing repetitively over and over. If you use After Effects or other programs, you can often run these by going to File, Scripts, Run Script File, or choose one of the uh, built-in script files that comes with, for in this case, After Effects. And a script interface usually looks like this. It's a window we can move around like this. Occasionally, we can dock these type of windows, uh, which then it will appear just like these, which we can shift around and move in the After Effects or other program UI. Uh, in other programs, Yes, you can run scripts the same way, uh, but sometimes they will visually look slightly different. For example, Illustrator scripts uh, use what are called dialogue windows rather than palette windows. These have a more rounded appearance which match up with the Illustrator theme itself. With scripts, the interfaces are generally composed of the same face elements, whether it's a radio box, an edit text, box, a button like this, most of the elements in scripts are always going to look the same, um, which is a sort of limiting factor. You can use images inside of scripts, but uh, in terms of customization, like a website, this is going to be far limited. Now for the functionality of a script itself, again, this really varies on the program, but generally it is used to automate or do things quickly for you that would normally take a lot of time. It gives you access to go in and program uh, certain actions inside of whatever program you're using. I could set up an action to automatically create a composition with a certain name, a certain resolution, and all these other settings can be automated. But say I needed to do that, say a thousand times, having to click Control N, type in all this stuff, and continue to do that a thousand times would take forever. A script would allow us to write just a few lines of code and just in a few seconds would automatically do all of this processing for us. And it also has superpowers like being able to quickly undo things and uh, have access to basically any part of the program, depending on which program. If you are familiar with any of these in general, it would probably be scripts because they are the most commonly used and easiest to do, deal with. Um, in terms of the language, you will be writing scripts in JavaScript or JavaScript extended JSX. And basically what this means is JavaScript using an older uh, language standard. So there are some newer JavaScript features that aren't available in scripting itself, but in general, you're mostly just interacting with After Effects, InDesign, Photoshop, Premiere, uh, Illustrator, and dealing with all of the, the elements that are in your project or document and manipulating them using commands. The next thing I wanna go over is extensions. This is the next step up. It is essentially a website which runs a script and communicates with the Adobe program. Um, what I mean by this is it's basically a web interface with a script running some functionality in the background. To access this in most of your programs, you go to Window and Extensions. 
And in each program, you can also set up extensions to work for all of your programs. Sometimes scripts can be very difficult to make cross-platform, but with extensions, you can quite easily make them work for all the programs. Um, so I can choose an extension and load it up to see what it looks like. And as you can see right off the bat, this is an unfinished extension, but compared to a script, we already can see there's some customized um, things set up in terms of the UI. We have more options um, in terms of what we can do uh, in terms of the UI, and then we can use a script to communicate with it. So the languages used in an extension are HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, XML, the basic web languages, and you can even use libraries like Node.js, React.js, and lots of other useful things to make your uh, window here or your app much more advanced. And then what you can also do with an extension is use that HTML, get some input, and then you can send that input down into a script and automate some processes um, inside of whatever Adobe program you're using. So I could type in maybe some cut times, maybe 10 seconds, one minute, 20 seconds. And if I had it set up, I could easily click a button, send these times down into a script, which will then automate the cutting or whatever instructions I give it uh, inside of whatever program I choose using a script. Extensions are much more difficult to make than a script. So if you are planning on creating one, it does take a lot more knowledge, work, and patience. Uh, the setup just to run these uh, and test them out can take a lot more time. And it does, of course, just take more experience. Now, the last two things I'm going to go over on this list are things that people often get confused with other applications. There are scripts, extensions, plugins, and UXP plugins. Now, I guess maybe I could be more detailed about my definition of what a plugin is, but plugins are generally anything you apply under uh, After Effects or Premiere, under Video Effects, Audio Effects, or anything down here in the Effect dropdown. These are all uh, basically Effect plugins. A plugin in one respect is anything you see in After Effects or Premiere underneath the video effects or audio effects uh, dropdowns. Uh, in After Effects, it's under effect and all of these here. Those are effect plugins. But additionally, a more uh, familiar user of say After Effects may be familiar with different types of uh, plugins that can be run from different menus. Some of you may be familiar with this effects console plugin here from Video Copilot. This, for example, is not an effect you apply to your footage or anything. It is simply something as a menu that you load up, which offers some functionality. Similarly, if you right click on a layer and go to a keyframe assist, each one of these options here, and actually a lot of these other options that we can access are all technically plugins. They're not effect plugins, but they are called AEGP plugins. Now, those are the two types of main plugins in general that you can have. Uh, AEGPs are only for After Effects, but Effect plugins can apply to Premiere and After Effects. There are also some types of sort of effect plugins for Illustrator as well. There's also some different filters for Photoshop, which I think there may be some level of access to. But in general, a plugin is a menu. A command that does something in After Effects or some kind of audio or video effect you apply to your clips or footage. These are so complicated to create compared to scripts and extensions, but they offer you so much control because you can basically generate imagery from scratch and have full control instead of using a set set of libraries uh, like scripting and extensions give you a sort of limited scripting library, which limits sometimes what you can access. With a plugin itself, you can modify the individual pixels and have extremely fast processing speed to do things you would never dream of in scripting or extensions. Now to write a plugin, you basically are using straight C++ and sometimes C. These are more high level languages as it is a more high level code that you're writing to achieve better things. And in terms of interface UIs for plugins, at least the ones in uh, effect plugins generally have the same elements. Similarly to scripts, you have the same kind of drop downs, uh, slider controls, color checkboxes, normal checkboxes, and buttons. Uh, however, there are customizabilities with plugins which allow you to create custom UIs. You may have seen a few plugins with these kind of things, but generally plugins will use these same base elements. And as well, 
uh, as we showed with uh, FX console, some custom UI can be created for other kinds of plugins as well. So that's one of the more confusing things. For some reason, a lot of people just call plugins scripts or scripts plugins, or they call an extension a plugin, which it's really kind of more vague and hard to define because if you have an extension which runs a script, you technically just have an extension, but you can have an extension which runs a plugin and it kind of becomes a plugin. If, for example, I had an extension which I launched and it applies my own custom effect here, maybe it's this false color effect, and that's only exclusive to my extension. Well, now it's kind of a hybrid extension plugin. Uh, so there is some overlap, but when you are releasing just a straight up script or extension, call them by what they are. If you use the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc., to make a web page interface, which has a script which communicates, it's an extension. If you use the JavaScript extended JSX file to create an automation tool, that's a script. If you use C++ or C to create an effect plugin or a new menu item that does something cool in After Effects, that's a plugin. Now this leads us to the newest thing Adobe has introduced to sort of just muddy the waters and make it more confusing. Now I'm not trying to blame anyone for particularly calling scripts, plugins, or extensions the wrong thing. I make the mistake all the time and I have videos here on YouTube where I call the tutorial thing that I'm making the wrong name. I'll call a script a plugin on accident. It just happens. But in general, like when we're releasing a product, that is a time where I don't think it's very excusable. There are many times I've collaborated on projects and it's been called the wrong name, which I just have to give a friendly reminder that this isn't what it is. And uh, a lot of people just want a cool tool and they don't know what the names are necessarily. And it's important to inform them of what the proper names of all these things are. So the last thing Adobe did to muddy the waters in this whole thing, if you already finally learned what scripts and extensions were, and you finally got a grasp of what effect plugins and those kind of plugins were, they introduced UXP plugins. Now, if I go into Photoshop and go to Window, you can see under Extensions, it now says Legacy. This is the only program you'll find this in. If I go to my Extensions in Illustrator, uh, it doesn't say Legacy or my other programs. It does not say Legacy, it just says Extensions. But if I go into Photoshop, they're now called Legacy. Now the reason extensions are now legacy in Photoshop is because they're moving on to something called UXP plugins. Now UXP plugins are supposed to be the next sort of iteration of extensions. I, as far as I am aware, extensions that use this previous format, which are called CEP extensions, which I just referred to, uh, using the HTML, CSS, and whatnot, these will all become legacy. They'll still work, but they'll be having this legacy title. Now we have these different kinds of plugins. So let's go ahead and just launch uh, this ratio guides uh, plugin here. It is basically a kind of extension script hybrid looking window, to be honest. It's able to be docked and move or moved around nicely. Uh, but the reason they're moving on to this newer uh, type of extension or plugin, see, I'm making the mistake myself. This is a UXP plugin, but it is going to be replacing what extensions were. Uh, the interface, as you can see, is using pretty much the same elements and the same appearance as everything else in our Photoshop uh, UI. And that's great because I think Adobe's goal is to sort of start having all of the UXP plugins use the same uh, sort of design style and have the same look. With the previous extensions, CEP extensions, you could use any HTML, any CSS and JavaScript to create whatever kind of web page you wanted. And I'm sure you can still have quite a bit of that customizability here because this is somewhat web-based, uh, but it is an attempt to create something more cohesive where a lot of the extended products people are making have similar looks and uh, I guess sort of integrate into the program better. So UXP plugins, the newest thing currently only in Photoshop, but they have been saying that it is the plan to upgrade the rest of the programs to it. Now, what do we use to program these UXP plugins? It's sort of a combination of several things. We have some HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, um, and this is to create the UI. You can use um, just simple HTML and CSS to create it, and you can also use React.js. So if you are familiar with React.js, 
uh, UXP is going to be very comfortable for you because a lot of the uh, code to create some of the UI and some of the interactivity with uh, the program itself will require React formatting. Now, in terms of what is supported in UXP because it's so new, right now, sort of everything is supported. You just have to be very creative in how you code this. If you are going to take the jump into learning something so new like UXP plugins, um, you should know that there are a lot of unknowns and things that could change as it's still in development. Uh, there are limitations in terms of uh, standard support for features in terms of like accessing menus and applying things and creating layers and stuff. Because it's so new, there are workaround methods for how you achieve these kind of things. Hopefully I'm not rambling on too long, but basically UXP plugins are the newest iteration of extensions. They are going to be using the Spectrum design uh, library to sort of have this more consistent theme throughout all of these UXP plugins to also match the Photoshop interface better. Um, in terms of functionality, they do function very much like scripts, uh, but because they're so new, the way we do commands and things uh, varies a bit. And we sort of will make these UXP plugins currently by running something called batch play commands. Uh, and long story short, batch play commands are basically like we record our own actions and we, we create code with that. We paste it into our UXP plugin and that will rerun the action for us. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's the difference between scripts, extensions, plugins, and UXP plugins for all of the Adobe programs. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, Instagram for live updates, and of course, AE scripts and some other sites for some of my products I release. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and hang out with some of our awesome members. And if you're not already a member of our YouTube channel, you can join in the link in the description to become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks like a weekly live streams, code in advance, and much more. And again, you can check out some products I'm starting to release on AE Scripts. I currently have False Color released, which is on sale until November 19th if you're watching this live. But other than that, there'll be plenty more products coming, so make sure you check it out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.